What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours through, of course, the Skyrender. And yes, semi-finals in the LBA. I actually did not mention that in my pre-game session that we actually are in the semi-finals. And it's against Shadow Valley Murkrow or Mr. Murkrow. His channel will be linked down below. This guy, like I said previously, beat me 6-0 uh, in, um, in the pre-playoffs, you know, in the league. And uh, I was really, really scared going into this game. And if you want my pre-planning, it is in the video down below. But other than that, I'm um, just gonna say what I did prepare for going in here. First of all, I predict his team really well. Uh, I really was seeing all of these. I was hoping for Tyranitar, but at the same time, he had no use for it. He could just ride off my own sand with my Powdown. And I think it was glad seeing the Powdown there. Now, he doesn't know that it's Sand Force yet. And besides that, um, I really, really was hoping for a superior lead against my Thunderous. My Thunderous does roughly against 90% damage on it, uh, give or take. It can't kill it, uh, but it can do a lot of damage to it. So I decided to go for safety goggles, hoping for Sand and Among Us. That did not happen. Had I had Expert Belt, things might have turned a little bit different actually this battle. But as it stands, it's actually kind of okay. And um, besides that, I have no real game plan. I'm basically gonna try to whittle him down. Uh, once Talonflame is gone, I should win this match. Uh, there should be no stopping my Scallopede uh, this battle. So with all this, my guys, let's actually see what happens. So I did predict right, he's gonna start off with Superior. Like I said there, I was really hoping that his Superior was, to some extent, actually Scarfed. Now, it will showcase that while well, he is faster by default, and the Leaf Storm will do very, very, very little damage. Um, he still gets, of course, a attack raise, a special attack raise. My, of course, hidden power will do just about enough, really, to take him down to an area where I feel comfortable. And now he's gonna show me the hidden power eyes. Uh, I could have suspected this, but I don't have any switchings for it. And I was really glad the amount of damage that Thunderous was making on the Superior. So while this play looks really, really bad, it is actually the best play I could have made. Because that means that his Superior is gone. And uh, I'm gonna go for Protect basically to uh, make sure that I outspeed him. Uh, I shouldn't really fear this Pokemon whatsoever after one speed boost because now I know it's not Scarfed. And um, I'm gonna go for Safe Poison Jab. Uh, he could have switched into his Excadrill here, but his Excadrill is actually O-Code by, um, by an EQ, so that would be extremely risky for him. So anyway, he's gonna go to his Talent Flame now. And Talent Flame is actually the only thing, and I mean the only thing who can defeat my Scallopede uh, 1 1 and knowing that I'm of course gonna switch out to my Powdown mind you this is a special defensive Powdown it has a defensive investment but not a lot it has special defense investment enough to be treated killed by Manetric and Power Ice and uh, actually be able to deal with a potential special hitting uh, Toxic Croak if that's the case now I do decide here to go for an Earthquake predicting the switch out to Toxic Croak, but he went to Slowbro, and uh, you know that's fine, uh, or not really Toxic Croak or anything like that. I could have gone for Rocks, but I was basically Earthquake, hoping for that either he brings the Excadrill, Toxic Croak, or Slowbro. I would have hit into all those three just fine, and obviously Talonflame does not do a lot of damage on my uh, he pound on. Now I do have access to Rock Slide. I don't want to showcase that, or I mean Stone Edge, uh, but I don't really want to showcase that. So I'm gonna go to Asuxus. Basically, hoping here for potentially that he's gonna set up or that he went for a skull. Uh, I was basically in a position where I needed to sack something, and a Saxus, my Garchomp, was actually my best Pokemon to sack. Uh, he's not important in this battle because he did not bring a lot of walls to this game. And I'm gonna go for Mega Evolution, of course. Uh, we need that to happen. And I'm actually gonna go for a sub, hoping that he will keep subbing or call mining. That he sees this in a given circumstance to do so, because if so, then Earthquake should be close to it killing it. But he's gonna show me the Ice Beam, and um, I mean, that's bad. That is actually bad. Like I said, Garchomp, not really that ex excited for this match. It's not gonna do a whole lot for me. And while I do outspeed a few of his Pokemon, it is not gonna be enough once he got the damage here that I actually suppressed myself. So Earthquake will do. I mean, that's, I guess, around 40%, and that's fine. I just need the damage from it, because Megahorn does not one-hit KO uh, from... Uh, I think it need 
some prior damage to um, ooh, I think I do around 80 at best with Mega Horn. So I'm gonna go back to Breeder Max and basically threaten him out. Now I think I went straight ahead for the Mega Horn. I had no reason not to, um, since I do outspeed naturally. So he's gonna go to his Yoshiro actually. And I don't know if this was a sack play or not, but the Mega Horn will do a lot of damage to this thing. A lot of damage. And uh, he has Sand Rush, of course, since it didn't show up in the Mold Breaker. And after one speed boost, even if it's scarfed, or no, I'm, I'm faster by default, but speed boost will make me faster by default. And Earthquake will just annihilate this thing. Now, he could have switched to his Talon Flame there, but I think he thought that hopefully I'm a Sword Stance set and he can take advantage of that. But I do pack the, <laughs> the Earthquake just for that position and of course Mega Manetric. So anyway, Talon Flame is back and I of course have no other play than the Hippowdon. There is nothing else I really can do and he's going for another round of Brave Bird and it is not even close of killing me. It's far from it to be honest. And with that damage, I actually decide here that, alright, I actually need to go for Stealth Rocks now, because now his x grill is gone, and uh, there is no reason for me of actually trying to play around that. And he'll go for, of course, a switch out here to his, going in, which actually is a Toxic Croak. And this is a very, very interesting situation, because before I made this decision to go for an Earthquake, I actually did the Calx here to be sure that I could survive a Focus Blast. And Focus Blast, max damage is 134. So, he's gonna go for the Focus Blast, landing it, and I am so sure I'm gonna survive it, uh, even with Life Orb, like I said, I didn't mention that, but I did intend it to be a course Life Orb. And of course, we do live it, and Earthquake will of course kill the Toxic Croak. That is one of the best ways that ever happened. Now, I don't have anything any anymore for Talonflame, and I know that's bad, but I do have one card off my sleeve in case we come to that situation. Now, he will go to his Mega Manetric, that's fine. Uh, he's gonna get his free Mega Evolution, and like I said before, it's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. This thing is not potentially a threat since I have still got Scolipede, and knowing that is gonna be immensely helpful. Now I did go for a slack of here, hoping that he was acting weird. Of course, he's not doing that. There is no need to. But that was the only play I got. Like I got the rocks up. I, that's the only thing I care for. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Betamax, and I actually go and go for Protect here. Because, I know it sounds strange, but at the same time, I do not outspeed a Mega Manetric. And he could have taken advantage of that and going for a heavy hit on me. So he's gonna go to his Mustang, and with that Stealth Rock damage, we are now in a position where he can kill himself with the Brave Bird. So I was thinking, I could switch in Kelio here, and basically um, showcase him here that... Um, or he, he will die by the Brave Bird, basically. But he's actually gonna go for Roost, which is actually better. Because he still wanted to KO my Keldeo um, if I not have the Koba Berry, which I do. Uh, so basically, I was luring him in there. So he's gonna go for Braver, but Keldeo is braver. Braver than the bird. And it's gonna take it. He's gonna take it. Not well. Not well at all. But I am able to take a bandit hit with 95% uh, at max. And of course, we take that damage, and the skull will just finish off the Telephone. Fuck that bird. Fuck it hard. <laughs> I hate that bird so much. And of course with that Pokemon gone, there is just no stop in the Scolipede now. We got the opening we so desperately was actually luring for. Keldeo, what a champ. And of course I back Toxic because I hate slow bros. I, I really had to have slow um, <laughs> Toxic. And major props to Ellis or uh, Friket, uh, my assistant coach, who actually mentioned the importance of having Toxic against the Slowbro in case Thunderous fails. And yes, how important that was. Because now he can't stall me out, he can't go for Calm Mind because he will be whittled down by the Toxic. And he's gonna go for Psy Shock, pretty much, you know, finish off the Keldeo. Keldeo, good job, pretty bastard, water horse, I don't know what you are, but damn, what a game changer. And of course now, like I said, there is nothing stopping Keldeo. The only thing that could be stopping me is a potential miss with Mega Horn, right? I would be just the best. That would be very, very, very sad if that were to happen. But luckily for me, I don't have to worry about that. And Scolopy just say, no, enough. Die. Fee, file, fiend. And Slower's gonna go down. Scolopy, what a, what a freaking beast. I never really used it as a sweeper, but damn, 
you know, if you aren't prepared for it and you can't stop it, then, you know, you're gonna go down. So, he's gonna go for Intimidation here with the Mega Manetric and due to the speed boost, I am outspeeding by default, I do believe, but I wanted to stay safe. Yeah, that's a weird play for me, I didn't really need to go for Protect, I'm faster. But he's gonna go for a T-Ball, pretty much hoping I was switching out to Sigilyph, but I do realize that Earthquake is just about enough and I had my Sigilyph Scarf, so I would have outspeeded anyway. But uh, yeah, the Earthquake is actually enough to kill, uh, which I was hoping it wasn't, but at the same time that is really, really cool. So we do win 2-0 here to Mr. Murkrow, and um, yeah, there is really only one play here that made a difference, and that is his sacking of the Talon Flame, which obviously wasn't a sacking, but he didn't see the Koba Berry coming. So <laughs> yeah, I was actually really glad I won. Because this win means very little to me, it actually does. I was so glad just to make it to the playoffs and now we're actually playing the finals in uh, our division. And that is really cool and it's against D-Train which means that my forfeit was not in vain. Um, I was actually to some extent predicting that I will meet him in the end anyway. So it's kind of funny, it actually is. And it's going to be one hell of a game, it's going to be sell on Saturday which is... Um, and it's also really cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just to comment here, I was really rooting for Murkrow throughout the playoffs. I really were, um, even before that, because he has made one hell of a trip. Much like me, started you know, stopping at 7-5. Um, and it was in, a, I do believe, a 4 losses ratio uh, at worst, and actually turned up one around. So he has definitely had one of those like really, really sunshine stories behind him. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was a bit bummed that I beat him. I actually were, but uh, at the same time, I was telling him I won't hold back. And uh, luckily, my pre-game plan here, uh, constructed with Ellis, of course, um, did work out. And Kelio made a lot of difference this battle. It actually was probably the thing that was going to lure him in. And I actually, I can't help but laughing about it because I do realize how tough of a decision he had to make going for that braver and i think the roost actually killed him i he, he started to feel really really comfortable uh, he would have died by the switching uh, had he switched out or gone for u-turn or gone for braver had gone for braver he would have died by the damage at that point so him going for a roost basically meant that he had a chance of switching out and coming back in but he decided that he could oko the kelio no matter what and i knew that he could do that so the co barrel basically like yeah it was basically like a bait for him for going for that damage and of course me finish him off which was i'm not gonna lie it was pretty cool uh, <laughs> because it was such a game changer until that point my scolipede was just ravaging through his team but like i said it was a complete stop against this talent flame talent flame was gonna win that matchup and i knew that all this time and it was really frustrating because I had to sack my Garchomp, which probably could have dealt with um, with the Talent Flame really well. But it was still like the least important member of my team. And that made this battle so much more um, tougher for me to turn around. Um, so yeah, Mr. Murkrow, GG man. I mean, that was a really fun battle. It was definitely very, very tight to the very end. And uh, D-Train or David... I'm coming for that champ. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to win. I won't hold back here. I I I need to. I really do. We can't have you a champ two two years in a row. But it would be extremely funny if I pull that off. His team is so tough. <laughs> but you know what, guys? We will deal with that when the time comes, right? So anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Of course, remember to leave a like if you like this video. If you didn't like this video, leave a like anyway, because, well, that seems fair. <laughs> and also, guys, have a great day, and take care, guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye. Oh, yeah, sky's the limit, right? <laughs>